Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jumma mubarak to you all. Bismillah. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. In Ahmaduhu and Astainuhu and Astaghfiruhu. When I would be lahim in Shururi and Fusina, I'm in Sayati Amalina. May ya di hilla who fella mudilla, or may you lil who fella hadilla. Or I shadu la ilaha in the law of the hula shrikala. Or I shadu enna Muhammadan Abduhu or Sulu, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All praises due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from those of our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray. Whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship. No God except Allah, the one who has no partner. I bear witness that Muhammad is Allah's true servant and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqullah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa to Muslimun, O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves, and do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbi Shrahli Sadri wa Sili Amri wa Hlul of the Tamilisani, Yafu Koli, Subhanaka la il Malana illa ma'alam tana in Nakantel Akimul Hakim. Again, Jumma Mubarak to you all, uh, blessings to you all, salams to you all, wherever you may be, whether you are here in the space or whether you are. Seeing this later, um, you know, may uh, the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you and your loved ones uh, during this time. So whether you uh, may be like me, uh, realize that uh, Ramadan has come up again uh, in, in a way that kind of feels like it's almost blindsiding that, oh, it's right around the corner. Um, you're not alone. Uh, so, you know, we, we've got uh, in, in case we may have known or not known, you know, Ramadan is right around the corner and um who knows kind of where we might be feeling that we are at. Uh, oftentimes there's a consensus that people feel pretty unprepared when it comes to Ramadan. So uh, you're, you're, you're in good company in that sense. But what I wanted to lift up today briefly was that with respect to Ramadan, we oftentimes think about what's the, the biggest connotation that, that comes to mind when we, when we say Ramadan or when we talk about Ramadan, whether within Muslim community or even outside of Muslim community. Uh, and oftentimes the connotation that comes to mind for folks is uh, fasting, is this aspect of fasting, um, not even water, you know, this this type of deal. So people, um, you know, will will be talking about like, hey, uh, you know, what 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 do Muslims do during Ramadan? Uh, they'll they'll say that oh, this is kind of like the the staple of it, the fasting. And what I wanted to lift up was uh, with respect to the fasting, because we 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 know how. Uh, we can get with respect to uh, the the throes of the fasting, or how how it can always like sometimes feel like oh it's uh, it gets to be really much about planning or the different iftars or the suhoor or the different meals or whatnot. It feels like a lot of times that kind of takes front and center. Of course, there's other ritual elements of Ramadan that become pretty popular that become pretty centered with respect to the supererogative prayers, with respect to tarawih, uh, you know, communal gatherings, all this different stuff. But when it comes to fasting, I think it's really important for us to reflect on why we fast, um, and especially within the society that we're in, especially within the uh, different things that we'll be facing uh, in this society. Uh, it, it sometimes uh, makes us feel a little bit makes it may, may feel a little bit weird, like, hey, why why are we leaving uh, this fasting? It's just something that that Muslims do, uh, and and there's a variety of reasons that we might give that to people if they ask us whether they're Muslim or not Muslim, like, hey, why do you fast? Um, and, you know, there's probably a variety of them that come to mind that are something like we can maybe empathize with uh, those who don't have uh, food, you know, those who go without food, it gives us a chance to empathize with them, or, uh, you know, it's it's just another, it's a part of our faith, the pillar of the faith, you know, it's one of the five pillars, we have fasting that's there. Uh, there there's a lot of these reasons that come to mind. Uh, and what what we want to lift up as well is, is one, um, with respect to what does the Quran say about uh, fasting, like why was fasting even prescribed to us? Why was it even uh, put forth to us? And thinking about what our experience often is, like when we are in uh, our fasting mode, what are what do we what do we, what do we think about usually? What are we always um, what what do we find ourselves kind of preoccupied with? Um, how do we find ourselves being? And thinking about how the Quran says that you know fasting was prescribed to you, speaking to the Muslims, as it was prescribed to those who came before you. You look at traditions like the Jewish tradition, Christian tradition, they have elements of fasting as well. 
Uh, it's not unique to Islam uh, in, in, in and of itself as a practice. But for, this fasting was prescribed to you as it was prescribed to those before you so that you may become God conscious, so that you may become a people of taqwa. Uh, you may become a people um, that have a, uh, a, 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 a mindfulness of Allah, not just a mindfulness or awareness that, okay, Allah is there and, and that's there. But this taqwa is really this aspect of knowing, uh, feeling, and internalizing um, this deep sense of connection, both with respect to the divine and, and thinking that uh, we're aware of that which we do, not necessarily like we are under a microscope all the time, but a consciousness and mindfulness with respect to how we are also living our life, because how we engage in the world around us, how we engage with the people around us, the creation around us, all these different things around us uh, is a reflection in and of itself with how we reflect with the divine. That if we are not being grateful for these things, if we are not being kind, or if we are not being, if we are providing harm, if we are doing sorts of wrongs or whatnot to that which is around us, our relationship with the divine would also be uh, tested in that way. It would also be, uh, you know, incomplete. It would be harmed in that way as well. So. Fasting is a way for us not just to abstain from food uh, and water for the purpose of losing uh, weight or for the purpose of, you know, just getting certain things about our bodies right or whatever it might be, or just because it's a cultural thing or just because everybody's doing it, whatever the different reasons might be. But fasting really at its root is to help us kind of recenter ourselves to get into that state of mind to be not just aware of Allah, but be able to kind of see that those things that are in the world that we find maybe are preoccupy ourselves or that we feel like we really need these things. We really need to do this stuff here. We need to have this meal. We need to have this. We need to have this just in order to uh, continue on with our day or whatnot. It really gives us a moment to pause and say like, do we actually need as much as we're saying that we need? Do we actually need to do the things that uh, you know, the, the the cultural things that might come about, do these things that are based within this world, do they need to be um, absolutely every bit of our preoccupation? Or what is it like if we step back for a little bit, make a conscientious decision to say, you know, um, I'm going to abstain from food and water for this period of time. What happens to us in that sense? What is, what is the secondary effect? What's the primary reason for that? And thinking about in the sense that Allah has told us that the purpose of this is not to, uh, you know, for, for Allah to, uh, to revel within our suffering or to make us just like, you know, uh, go through this ordeal without a purpose, purposeless aim or anything. But the purpose of this type of fasting, this purpose of this um, abstention is to remind ourselves of Allah. So we might be removing, you know, the, the uh, physical nourishment from our bodies. We might be removing the, that which gives us, uh, you know, that quenches our hunger, that quenches our thirst, uh, that fills and sat satiates us here um, from a somatic perspective. But thinking about from a spiritual perspective, we are filling in the void with respect to the remembrance of Allah, to, with respect to the cognizance of Allah. Again, we're all on a spectrum of faith. We might be practicing at different levels of it, but the ultimate goal of it to be a people that are God conscious in, in, in how we go about in this world. And there's an important aspect to lift up that fasting in Ramadan is of two types. You have a fasting that is of the outward, that is of the body, that is of the stomach, um, you know, the physical fasting. And then you have a fasting of the heart. Um, so the fasting of the body, of course, we have, uh, you know, the abstention of food, um, you know, throughout the day, abstention of water throughout the day. Um, physically, there's certain things that we can't do um, when we're fasting um, in terms of uh, you know, being intimate with our spouses, uh, or, you know, other, any other things that, that will come to mind that may be forbidden, you know, we, we leave that off during fasting, the physical elements to, uh, this, this component of fasting. But there's an interesting hadith by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace and blessings be upon him, that says that there are some people that will go through, uh, Ramadan, that will go through fasting, and all they will get from their fasting, um, is, uh, is hunger and thirst, that that's all they will have gained from their fasting, that they will have abstained from food, water, they will have followed uh, the rules accordingly, but they will have just gotten um, only hunger and thirst is what they would have gained from that fasting, which speaks to this element that when we are fasting, and that's all we feel like we've gained, we might be missing in a sense something that there, that he's indicating that there is something else that is there, there's something greater that, uh, that we get. And this also alludes to the fact that we can't just fast as a ritual, but not change the rest of ourselves. that we can't just fast 
and continue to, you know, maybe we have uh, certain shortcomings in our character. Maybe there's certain ways we treat people. There's certain things that we do um, that might be uh, hurting other people or that not might, that, that might not be the most positive or benefit uh, beneficial thing. And if we just continue to do that, but the only thing that's different about us in Ramadan is that we're adding in fasting, but we haven't changed anything about our character that we might not be getting much benefit from our fasting. It actually might just uh, be more of a negative with respect to uh, what it, what it, when it results on what our scales show that, hey, this person did abstain from fasting or this person did participate in fasting and abstain from food, but they actually didn't abstain from anything else. Um, and we talk about fasting of the heart. Uh, that That is also in a sense with respect to what underlies the actual practice of fasting. And when we say fasting of the heart, we mean a fasting of the character that just as we deprive our body, we abstain from food and water, the basic things that we see as its nourishment, or we think are its nourishment for uh, how we conceptualize it. In a similar way, we fast our hearts from those things which we feel like, oh, we need to be doing, or we, we get maybe tied into, or we get looped into, and we have a chance to abstain from those things in a sense that uh, maybe we're it's it's very easy off the cuff to just uh, you know we may have a habit of just doing different white lies that might come across it might be seemingly innocent or whatnot but it's just become a habit as part of our as a part of our life or a part of our uh, you know daily business or a part of our daily trade or whatnot and thinking about. Um, what does it look like as well that if we're fasting, but we're still, our, our tongues are still deceiving, or if we are still fasting physically from our stomachs, but our eyes are still wandering and still maybe looking with uh, a malintent, uh, or that we are fasting, but our, uh, you know, our mouths may be carrying uh, some of the words that are not pleasing to, uh, you know, our faith, that are pleasing to our tradition, um, that we might be fasting, but our minds might be thinking about those things that are not beneficial, or maybe thinking of other people in a judgmental way or a hurtful way or whatever it may be. Um, we might be backbiting, we might be doing all these different things. But again, hey, if we're fasting, um, we sometimes think that we're just participating in it. We'll just, uh, the point of fasting and the marker of its success is uh, having, you know, open that fast or then having to break that fast and successfully abstain from food and water. Uh, it feels like that's a great successful um, fast. And it may be, but what our Prophet Sallallahu teaches us is that we need to be more privy to the fact that it's not just about that ritual. It's not just about uh, point A to point B. It's actually about how did we how did we do throughout this part? How did we do throughout that journey um, that we could fast all 30 days, but we may not have gotten anything out of it. And this is why I feel like when we think about the verse of the Quran that says fasting has been prescribed so that you may become more God conscious, so that you may become a people of taqwa. Um, so that you might become a people who are mindful of God, that it's not just about the food, it's not just about the ritual, but it's also about the internal. What's what's different about me? You know, what's different about me when I go through Ramadan? Um, you know, I'm not just, uh, you know, measuring up in a sense of like, I'm a little lighter on the scales, I'm a little on this side or this side, but I'm actually going through Ramadan and you notice the change in yourself as a person. You notice that uh, there's certain things about you that when you're fasting and abstaining from food and water, there's also some things that you should be abstaining from that maybe were just, you know, just secondary to you and thinking about how one really does affect the other. That if you were to participate in your fasting, it would be very clearly, you'd be able to, you know, put up a, a yellow card or a red card when you would, uh, you know, take a bite of food or drink some water intentionally in breaking the fast throughout the middle of the day, or just, you know, not willingly keep up with the fast, we would probably be like, oh my gosh, like, you know, we're, we're we broke the fast, or we had an offense to it. Uh, it, it makes us feel a lot of different ways that it's a clear way of seeing that, oh, actually, I, 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 I broke that fast, whether intentionally, unintentionally, whatever it may have been, but we didn't feel good about it. And thinking about, if that's the case for us, whether the unintentional eating or whether it is the intentional eating, whatever it might be that breaks our fast that we can observe uh, with respect to the outward fast, what are those things that we might do just as second nature that might be some of those vices that we have that uh, just go on, but we don't treat those in the same way we treat a, uh, a, 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 por a portion of food or water um, during the time when we're fasting that uh, we weigh that with a lot of seriousness and we see that how it, we, 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 can, we can visualize how a fast of the body would break. It's very easy for us to pinpoint that's broken or that's not, but we don't give much attention to the fasting of the heart and uh, whether that breaks very easily or not. And we might be thinking that, hey, like, you know, I've gone through Ramadan, I've gone through all days uh, and I've completed my fast here. My fast of the body has been completed. Yeah, we might have, but how many times during the day did we break the fast of the heart? 
Um, how many times of the day did our, our, our heart that has also been fasting, that is purifying, that is trying to be refined, that is trying to become more mindful of God, that is trying to uh, become more righteous, how many times did that heart's fast get broken because we may have told a lie, we may have uh, let our anger get the best of us in different ways, we may have brought harm to somebody, we may have backbit, we may have done some type of injustice, whatever it was in a sense we might have done something there but we we would we would discount it there because it's not affecting the ritual practice in and of itself that oh hey it, you know we, we still abstain from food and water so that's a measure of success and inshallah with this ramadan thinking about as we go in as we get prepared for ramadan um in in, in every situation it may feel like oh it's just kind of coming how do i even prepare for it or whatnot but a very basic simple step that thinking about for us that as we gear up for ramadan as we rev up for Ramadan, we can always prepare with like, hey, uh, Etsy has these nice decorations. I'm going to buy this stuff or I'm going to do all this stuff and have the great iftar parties and everything like that. Cool. You know, you do you get 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 uh, get what you can for your Ramadan practice. But think about, in a sense, when we are revving up for Ramadan, when we are preparing for Ramadan, we may have prepared for the fast of the body, we may have prepared for the fast that we can actually see and we can actually feel and we can actually experience um, and, 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 and be able to live through here in this sense. Uh, we can quantify it, we can do all that stuff. What have we done to prepare for the fast of the heart, um, which is the greater fast, which is the fast that is uh, all about um, what our, our faith and our walk of life is, that as the Quran tells us that uh, at the end of the day, we're all gonna come before Allah, we're all gonna come before Allah, and the only thing that would be accepted from Allah, it's not gonna be all these different things that we've we've done and everything we got uh, all backed up against us and, you know, all, hey, I built this, I did that, I accomplished this, accomplished that, that only a sound heart would be uh, accepted from Allah, that a qalb salim would be accepted, a, a pure heart. Uh, would be accepted and thinking about that uh, as much as our fasts this time and in our society and in our day and age are about the uh, food and water or the dates um, and you know the anything else that we conceptualize when we think about Ramadan um, and fasting that just as much as we center that and we think about that and we have the imagery and everything around that and we have the preparedness or unpreparedness or whatever the thoughts the centering of around that just as much as we do there what does it look like to be able to give a little bit of that attention, to be a little bit mindful of the fasting of the heart and thinking about in what ways that allows us to bridge the gap between um, our fasting practices that we uh, engage in, the fasting of the food and the water, um, and be able to address the gap between that practice and the mindfulness of Allah. Because sometimes it can be hard for us to connect, how is this trying to make me more mindful? I might be someone that gets really hangry. I might be really impatient when I uh, abstain from food, or I'm just not the person to mess with in different ways, or whatever it may be. You might be a little bit more tense, uh, whatever it might be, your, your particular predisposition or particularity uh, when you are fasting, but it allows us to fill the gap in a sense by saying that not only are we abstaining from food and water, so it's not just food and water, but it's also that which uh, may uh, you know, corrupt our heart, that which may uh, pollute our heart, that which may we might not be able to visually see, that we might not be able to quantify, but that which has a deeper effect in terms of uh, hitting at us in ways that we can't uh, quantify, we can't see. So thinking about it in this sense, uh, that as we are going into Ramadan, as we are preparing for Ramadan, as we are looking at uh, you know the dates coming up, as we are seeing when we might be able to fast for those of us who can fast, for those of us who are not able to fast in different ways, thinking that this, this onus is upon us both, that whether you are able to fast or you're not able to fast, whether you are sick or uh, if you're uh, in the menses or if you are um, in some way just uh, unable to fast for some reason, whatever it may be, that the fasting of the heart is that which is incumbent upon everybody. Um, that one is, it doesn't have uh, any kind of exceptions in that sense that anybody and everybody of all abilities uh, and every ability, any gender, uh, any background, any difference, everybody uh, will be fasting of the fasting of the heart uh, and thinking about in what ways that we might put all of our bags, all of our chips with respect to the fasting that seems like the, the actual practice of eating and drinking. But what does it look like for us to center the fasting of the heart or even just to be able to be aware that this is something that we should also uh, be thinking about? So as we're going into Ramadan, what does it look like for us to then 
uh, put this uh, in, in our dashboard, that as we are preparing for Ramadan, as we are preparing our food, our meals, or whatever it is, what does it look like for us to prepare for a fast of the heart? Um, what do we leave off on, not just leave off with respect to uh, from sunrise to sunset, like just leave it off for the whole day or whatnot? What do we, what do we prepare for in a sense that uh, we, 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 when we leave off something, we also intentionally know that, Hey, we can, we don't, we don't really need it. Like we didn't, we didn't need it as much as we thought we did. Maybe we were consuming something. Maybe we were addicted to something. Maybe we had, uh, have, have been, you know, pulled into another direction here. And we've been put in the space where we think that we need it. We need it. We need it. Um, and what Ramadan kind of helps us is that it's not just uh, a one day approach and that's all done. But Ramadan is a, uh, a month long journey. How does it help us build a habit of cleansing our heart that it does not have to just be all on that one day that first day that we do everything and if we messed up on that day uh, it's all shot but think about in the sense that a fast of the heart might be a lot more difficult than a fast of uh the the body because like i said you can see what you can see you can't see certain things um because you're you might just have these different uh tendencies, predispositions, or whatever, maybe addictions or things like that, that we're trying to uh, work out of, that you're going to have to re recognize that Ramadan is a uh, a marathon of sorts. It's a full-on journey. It's not just a one-day, uh, all, all, you know, all chips kind of end type of event. It is a, uh, a month-long journey. And so it's important for us to be able to check in throughout, like whether it is uh, across the for the category of 10 days, uh, each third of Ramadan, or in some type of break of each week of Ramadan, but for us to be able to check in and see, do we feel like we're making a difference? Do we feel like just like we've kept up with our fasts here, um, have we also kept up with this other internal fast? And how can we prepare for that? So as we're uh, closing out today, inshallah, uh, my uh, challenge for each of us, for all of us, especially myself, is to think about that as we look at the month, as we say, oh, this is the first day we're going to have to start fasting. This is a, we, we, we will know that day. Then this is the last day that we're probably going to be stopping to fast or whatnot. We'll probably have that idea around it. We'll be trying to mentally prepare for it, but think about what are some of those things that we are going to intentionally be able to name that we can leave off. If we're just going to say, Hey, I'm going to try and fast for my heart. I'm going to try and just be, uh, try and purify my heart. And I'm just going to, uh, do a fast of the heart as well and be intentional about it. Great. Good intention. But what are you fasting from? You know, what are those things that you can actually name that are some of those vices, that are some of the things that uh, unfortunately do get uh, become a part of us in different ways? Um, and like I said, for many of us, it might be white lies. It might just be uh, other habits or other behaviors or other things that might not be uh, fully becoming, that might be quite unbecoming of us, but are not uh, pleasing to the divine. And in what ways can we name those practices or name those habits that we have and intentionally focus that just as we know, we're not going to be fasting here from this. We're leaving off food, leaving off water, leaving that here. In what ways we can also name that, hey, I'm going to intentionally leave off thinking maybe a bad thought about somebody or backbiting somebody or um, do uh, you know avoiding whatever it might be. Uh, and being able to name that, but also being able to check in with ourselves that, hey, how, how, how did we do across Ramadan? How did we do across the first 10 days, the first week, or the whole month with respect to this one thing that we're trying to abstain from. And uh, the last thing I'll just say is in the sense that uh, our, our Prophet taught us that nobody uh, overburdens himself in the, or nobody, uh, you know, burdens himself in the religion, um, takes in so much of the religion, drinks from a fire hose with respect to the, uh, the deen, um, except that they become overwhelmed in it. Uh, that the deen is something that has been made easy. It's been made accessible. It's been made something that we can learn. It's been made something that we can grow in, that we don't all just grow in one day and, and all of a sudden we're, uh, you know, the end goal of Ramadan in, in day one, but that we progress towards something. And thinking about in the sense that if we start our Ramadan and we think that we're going to accomplish all these things or try and do all these things, great, have that mindset. But um, also don't set yourself up for failure. Think about that. I want to abstain from all of these different things and do all this different stuff. Great. Let's 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 work to that. But if you slip up in one sense, you might be more, uh, you know, you might be more predisposed to saying, oh, my gosh, like, you know, I, I can't do any of this is too overwhelming. I'm just going to leave it. Forget it. And you get frustrated with yourself. You get resentful. All that stuff comes. But what does it look like to be able to hone in on one specific thing or one tangible thing and build from that, that maybe if you stopped 
doing something like telling white lies or stop backbiting about other people or maybe judging other people, whatever it might be, that that leads to another thing that if you stop doing that, you might open the door to uh, closing one other thing or to stopping something else that gradually, just as we might abstain from one particular practice in life or abstain from something like if I am trying to lose some weight, I'm trying to get my get back in shape. If I leave off sweets and sugars or whatnot for an extended period of time, I might also start to leave off something else that might not be as good for me or whatever it might be. And it gradually starts to to pick up in that sense and thinking about from the fast of the heart in what ways we can start with something that's tangible that maybe is the most uh, noticeable thing that's out there um, that's the low-hanging fruit and see that when we intentionally work to purify ourselves and to remove that to fast from that with respect to our own hearts and respect to our own lives what does it look like to uh, then see what else uh, we, we realize that we're uncomfortable with that hey I don't like thinking these things about other people. I don't like maybe talking about people behind their backs, whatever it might be, um, that I'm also uncomfortable with these kinds of behaviors as well. So thinking about just as you're planning for uh, your, your your Ramadans, your iftars, your dinners, the parties, all this different stuff, um, the Quran, all of that great stuff that's happening in Ramadan, think about what are we doing on in the spiritual dimension for the fast of our hearts. Um, and as we leave, can we name one of those things uh, that come to mind. But you know, may Allah allow us to see uh, the end of Ramadan. May Allah allow us to see the beginning of Ramadan. You know, may Allah allow us to be a part of this uh, blessed month, this month that the companions of the Prophet and the Prophet would yearn for, um, not only when it would be coming around, but would yearn for as soon as it ended and, and would want to be able to continue to be benefited from it, but would yearn for the next Ramadan and to see the next Ramadan. Um, so may Allah enable us to all collectively be a part of and uh, practice of this Ramadan uh, and observe this Ramadan together to go through this Ramadan to be benefiting uh, benefited by this Ramadan and to benefit uh, others and all around us with this Ramadan but may Allah enable us to also go through this Ramadan in a way that reminds us that it's not just about the food it's not just about the water it's not just about the physical elements it's about the spiritual element it's about what are we gaining from this fast what we gain from that fast by the end of it is not something on the weight scale that might go left might go right but it's something that allows us to be more aware of Allah and when we're more aware when we're more God conscious when we're more mindful of Allah we're mindful of the world around us we're mindful of the people around us we're mindful of the relationships that we have we're mindful of the the belongings that we have uh, we don't take for granted the the benefits that we have the abilities that we have that we might have taken for granted that we have eyesight that we have uh you know working limbs and all these different things that when we are more god conscious we become more aware of what all we do have and what all we've been given a blessing of and especially in a time as today and as in recent times with respect to what we see with the news coming out of places like Gaza, where you see people going without food and water, having to eat animal feed, having to live in absolute, um, just the, the most dire type of situations, you know, in, 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 in the face of uh, brutal oppression and genocide, you see that the most adverse uh, type of circumstances that people are kind of going through yet still assembling to pray uh, their five prayers or pray to uh, on the Jummah prayers or do what they can to continue their practice. Uh, there's a powerful photo if you look at, and I'm sure there's so many more around, um, but if you look at, there's many photos uh, during the Syrian civil war uh, and you look up Ramadan, Syria, civil war, and you'll see people in the midst of rubble, in the midst of just absolute destruction around them, they have their tables set up, and the, or they said they have their uh, their um, you know there's their spread set up with respect to the dates and 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 the the water that they have, and they're eating together, uh, and just thinking about that, this is kind of like that mindfulness of Allah that this world will come, this 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 life comes and goes, but we truly become more appreciative of that which we have and that which we don't have. Um, we become uh, aware of that, and we become aware of all that is around us, and so. May Allah enable us to be a people that not only benefit from our fasting physically, but allow us to benefit from our fasting spiritually and allow us to not just fast from our stomach, fast for our bodies, uh, fast from food and water, but fast uh, for our hearts and fast from those things that uh, pollute our hearts, but those things that really disconnect us from Allah. Because at the end of the day, a, uh, a heart that is not fasted, a heart that is, um, that is clouded with some of these vices, is at the end of the day just a heart that is separated from Allah, is that disconnected. So we pray for Allah to help us make this a Ramadan of reconnection and reunification. Inshallah, Ameen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad kama salli
على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك أميد مجيد. Again, زاك الله خير. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I'll give some short announcements here just for Muslim space uh, before we close uh, the khutbah here. Uh, but just to give you a heads up, uh, with Ramadan coming around, please do know that Muslim space has a number of different things that are being planned for Ramadan. Uh, so please visit our website at uh, muslimspace.org slash Ramadan. Uh, and you can see all the different things that we've got planned. Uh, it's going to be a good Ramadan, inshallah, uh, productive space and a lot of exciting things happening. So we're looking forward to kicking that off. Um, as always, uh, you know, as, as we continue through the month, we want to keep our uh, brothers, our sisters, um, and our siblings in Gaza, uh, in, in any place in the world that is experiencing suffering, that is experiencing oppression, that is experiencing injustice, uh, that may Allah uh, alleviate their, uh, their, their, their uh, suffering, may Allah make us a tool for uh, their, the alleviation of this oppression and a, a, a source of liberation and comfort for them. Um, that please definitely keep them in your prayer. There is a humanitarian relief effort going from Muslim space uh, to Gaza. If you go onto our website, uh, there's some more information about that with respect to some of the merchandise that we have that we're selling. 100% uh, of those sale proceeds will go to uh, those humanitarian relief efforts. So definitely check that out. Um, we have a upcoming uh, Surah or Quran Halakha. Um, so this Sunday at 11 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time, we have uh, a halakha on Surah an -Naziyat. Um, and this will be uh, a time for people to uh, not only uh, learn a little bit more about the, the surah and the Quran, the surah and Nazia, but also have a chance to interactively uh, discuss in a group uh, about this. Again, check our website out for that. Uh, we have our monthly book club meeting next Friday. Um, and our book club this year, our book, our book club this month is on A Day in the Life of Abid Salama. Um, by uh, Nathan Thrall. So definitely check this out. Uh, we have a recurring series. Again, we get a chance to meet up, discuss the book, um, and, and be able to uh, have that interaction in social time. So uh, definitely be on the lookout for that. And as always, be sure to just uh, stay connected with uh, Muslim Space through the website, through uh, our socials, and through everything, and be able to see uh, where you could get involved as you'd like to get involved. Again, uh, come as you are, come as you'd like. Uh, take what you need and uh, bring what you like, whatever it is. And uh, inshallah, when we go into this Ramadan, we, we go into it much more uh, unified in so many different ways. But I hope that these can be of benefit to you all. Inshallah, we'll be uh, closing the session here. I personally have to go for uh, a, a, a meeting here, but it's a blessing to be here with you all. Uh, I hope that you have a, a safe and blessed Juma and a safe and blessed weekend. Uh, and inshallah, uh, the next time we get a chance to connect, it'll be before Ramadan, but uh, in any case, wishing you all uh, the absolute most foremost prayers for a successful, beneficial Ramadan for you and for your loved ones and everybody else here. Jazakallah uh, khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and blessings be upon you all.